Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Pocket Butcher by ADV, or Andre de Villiers. Sorry, I'm sure I just butchered your name. Uh, um, I want to thank my buddy Toad Sticker, who's, uh, he's got his own YouTube channel, check him out, for uh, sending this little guy along. Um, and let's do a quick little size comparison for you here. Um, this is an interestingly sized knife, in that if we compare it to, say, your Spyderco Dragonfly, we can see that this is not a very, uh, it's not a tiny knife. I mean, at some level, it looks like it should be a little slip joint, but in reality, it's got about as much blade as a Spydeco Delica. Here it is next to your Ontario Rat number one in D2 Steel, and your Rat number two. So again, you were in the same blade range as a Rat one. This is a serious, you know, cutting tool sort of knife, uh, well, at the same time uh, being very sort of old-fashioned. It's, it's neat in that way. I kind of like it. Um, so there's your size. One other thing I'll say is that um, ADV, the maker... Uh, you know, seems like a nice enough guy, but he's had his share of troubles. He's in the Blade Forums, Hall of Shame. Uh, there are stories out there, so you may want to acquaint yourself with those before you spend too much time. I, I don't know what to tell you there, but check it out. Just got to warn people in case so people don't come back at me. Um, so there you go. Um, let's talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the uh, ADV Pocket Butcher here. So first off, on the good side, it does have a nice little sharpening choil. You see right down in here, Beautiful thing, um, especially given that this is a knife that you badly just want to sharpen on a bench stone, just pulling back and forth. I mean, it's got that straight razor sort of an approach, and having that sharpening choil there is nice, very, very nice. So that's good. Next thing is that the uh, the finishing on the knife itself, in terms of surface treatments, is nice. You have sort of a, a satin finish all throughout on the metal here. You've got uniform directions of uh, kind of sanding here. The blade is very nicely. I mean, this is just a beautifully finished knife, and you can see a beautiful contrast between the uh, signature, which is a great touch, by the way, and the uh, rest of the blade. And then on the other side, he's actually got nicely laser engraved. I think it's laser. Maybe it's acid etch, but a pocket butcher. And it just, it's a beautiful, beautifully finished knife in that way. Next thing that really does bring me some joy, I'm going to see if I can show you this. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay. It's vertical, but you can see right there that he's put the date of production in there on the inside. That's absolutely subtle. You're not going to find it unless you're looking for it, but I love seeing production dates or serial numbers on knives, especially higher-end stuff, because it gives you a sense of connection, and it allows you to say, okay, this was a recently produced ADV Pocket Butcher, rather than this was a, uh, you know, this one was one of the very first prototypes or something like that. Um, I, I just, I don't know why I love it, but I love it, and this was really nicely done. It's it's nicely printed. It's nicely concealed. It's it's just it's beautiful. So thank you for doing that there. Um, the fit and finish on this guy overall is pretty damn good. Um, meaning uh, all of your surfaces are very consistent. There aren't a whole lot of deviations or uh, curves. If you run your finger across these little pins, I, you can hardly feel anything there. I mean, overall, th th it's very smooth. This little area, I was hard-pressed to figure out exactly what parts of this are multiple pieces of metal or just one piece. Um, you can see occasional seams here, but overall, the impression I get off of this is quality. This is well-finished. Um, particularly in the traditional game. It's very common to have a little bit of, you know, side-to-side -side play and things like that, whereas this feels very, very nicely done. So that's nice. And then finally on the good side, um, even though this is using relatively thick blade stock, it is pretty thin behind the edge. I mean, if we look at the tip here, see if I can get that to focus, you can see it's pretty thin, and even at the sharpening choil level, this actually does cut very nicely. Um, and it seems silly to say that a knife should cut, but damn it, a knife should cut. And especially something in a traditional pattern, this is not going to be meant to be a high-speed, low-drag, you know, hammer it into a wall and climb up of it sort of an affair. This is meant to be a cutting tool, and it is a good cutting tool. So I like that very much. Um, so that, to me, is what's good here. Is it's thin behind the edge, which makes it a good knife. The fit and finish is very good. Um, he's got some really nice touches to it, like his signature here, the, uh, the name, and... and and the date in there brings me some joy. Um, it's got a nice sharpening choil to it, and the finishes on the blade and on the knife overall are very, very nice. So that's good. Um, let's talk about what's great about this knife. To me, what's great about this knife is the idea underlying it, and that is kind of the idea of a modernized traditional knife. 
There is so much that has come out of modern a tactical knife making. Things like, you know, uh, pocket clips seem like sort of an everyday thing, but uh, and even design language. Things like a, a butcher blade, your fullers and things like that are very, very common in modern knives, but aren't so super common in traditionals. And in fact, this knife has all sorts of modern tactical design language built in. All of these various little chamfers and things like that, um, as well as some of the materials. This is D2 steel, which is a very nice modern steel. And yet, here ADV has chosen to put this into a very traditional sort of package. And this is kind of funny and excellent, because ADV is himself a very tactically minded knife maker. If you look at his, most of his creations are very high speed, low drag, so it's a tactical over the top knives. And yet, here he is doing this, and he's doing it well complete with nice little touches like the signature and good slip joint fit and finish. I respect the heck out of ADV for bringing his design language and his sorts of modern knife sensibilities into the traditional sense, and I think it's kind of a great thing. And so to me, that's what's great here, is that this is that marriage of modern tr and traditional that I've really been waiting to see happen more, and I'm glad to see that these things are going on. Let's talk about what's bad here. So, on the bad side, first off, one loss of modern sensibility is the um, one-hand opening. This knife cannot be opened by with one hand, or at least maybe some people can, but I sure can. Uh, instead, you use this little fuller here, which uh, allows you to open it with two hands. Not a big, big deal, but I, I sure can't pull it off. Uh, speaking of which, this fuller is not something that tends to drive me crazy um, in, with goodness. Um, you can see here that it is a very sharp fuller. There are corners in there all together, and so it's going to be very very hard to clean out this filler after you do some cutting with it. It's relatively deep and with those very sharp corners as opposed to something that's uh, a little bit more smooth that you can really kind of wipe out, uh, this is, that's not going to be so cleanable. So if you were cutting open a can of motor oil early in the day, now you cut your steak, now you got motor oil in your steak. Not a great idea. So uh, there you go. Next thing is that this guy feels honestly a little bigger than it needs to be. I understand that he's definitely needing to make affordances for modern and tactical but I'd love to see this guy a little bit scaled down. I think that would be great, and this big of a traditional knife is a little weird in the pocket. We'll talk to that uh, a little bit later here. Uh, next thing is this guy does not actually have a half stop. Um, on a lot of traditional knives, when you get the knife this far, it kind of stops again, and you need to give it another impulse to get it to close the rest of the way. Whereas this guy has one even push throughout the entire area, and then it locks shut very firmly. By the way, that locking shut and the firmness of that, both the lock open and closed, is really nice and kind of satisfying. So it does lack a half stop, and that's going to bother some people who are used to old school slip joint sorts of methods of opening and closing. Not terrible, but there it is. Um, next thing is that this guy is uh, not made to be disassembled. You can see here that it is pinned together, so there is no way to take this guy apart. You know, on a slip joint, okay, uh, that's, that's fine. And you can wash it out pretty good just by, well quite literally washing it out and drying it well, but there you go. And then finally on the bad side, we can see here that there is uh, there are some pretty substantial gaps right here underneath the bone. The reason this is bad and not ugly is that I don't actually know whether those are from the factory. This is a knife that has been used. It's been carried and whatnot. Um, and, you know, although it had these when I got them, I just don't, I, I don't know. And so maybe it's just there was a little chip of this bone popping out. Maybe it wasn't quite flush at the factory, but I'm not a big fan of that. That's the only real fit and finish foul I can point to on this knife. And so um, that is a little bit bad if that came out of the factory, but it's not ugly because I can't prove that it did. So to me, that's what's bad here. There is that gap with the bone. That's a little ugly. Um, it can't be disassembled at all. There's no half stop with it at all. It's got this fuller, which is going to trap crud very readily. It's a little bigger than it needs to be, and it's not one-hand openable at all. Um, let's talk uh, about the ugly here. So on the ugly side, um, first off, there are a lot of sharp little edges and corners on this guy. Um, although the main surfaces are nicely chamfered, like right here or on the bone here, there are so many little tiny sharp little edges that it's, it's kind of annoying. So right here, sharp little edge, edge, edge. Edge, edge, edge. In fact, I'll stick to one side. Edge, edge, and then the inside here. Oh my god, edge. Got another little edge here. Little edge here, little edge here, here. And then, uh, you know, on the back here. All of these things need chamfering. 
This knife just needs to have a good go over with some sandpaper before it leaves the shop to knock down some of those surfaces. I understand that it looks a little less clean then, but in the hand, it's very, very easy to find a series of ugly hot spots for this guy coming from all of these little extra millings here. I appreciate them. They look good but they need to be chamfered, and they're not yet. Um, the other result of this guy is that it needs a slip in the pocket here, because this will attack whatever else is in your pocket with all of these little sharp edges, and that's, that's kind of ugly. And speaking of which, that's the other ugly issue, which is that this knife is very, very awkward when closed. I mean, seriously, this knife, when closed, is about the same size. Actually, it's bigger than your Spyderco Dragonfly by a pretty good option. Here, I'll reverse the Delica. It's a little bit bigger than the Spyderco Delica, and it's got these big corners. This back issue is huge. I mean, seriously, this is a 90-degree angle with very sharp corners that's sticking, you know, maybe a quarter inch up above everything else. And that means that you can't just toss this guy in your pocket the way that you can a lot of traditional knives. This is going to just be poking, 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 attacking everything else. This needs to be in a slip in order to be decent. And so the awkwardness of having this blade in here, and I understand that you're trying to get a one cliff blade into a small handle. It's not going to be super space efficient, but I really do wish that he'd done something a little bit different with this area here that would make it not so likely to kill whatever else is in my pocket. And so to me, that's what's ugly. It's super awkward in the pocket overall, especially with this back area here. And there are sharp little edges everywhere that just badly need a visit from the chamfering fairy. Um, let's talk final conclusions here. So final conclusions, this is a knife that is very, very nice and whose idea I just love. The idea of modern tactical traditional just so damn neat to me. It brings me a lot of joy. That said, this is not a super practical knife either. It is very, very large. It has a whole bunch of corners and elbows to it, and it really needs to be in a slip, and it's pretty damn big to live inside of a slip in your pocket. But I still very, very much like it. And what's on my radar right now is that the same guy, ADV, is working on a uh, spear point version of this same knife. So the spear point will be able to sit a little deeper into the liner, which is just a beautiful thing because it has a curve on the bottom as well. You're not trying to fit a flat edge into a full area here. And it has a pocket clip. And I think that would really help with the fact that this guy currently doesn't carry all that well. If this could just hang out at the top of my pocket it would be a whole lot more workable. And I think with a couple of visits from the Champering Fairy, that could be really, really super compelling. But even as this guy is, you know, I don't know exactly who this is for or what it is for or what it really even is, but it is really neat and it is very, very well made. And so if you're looking at this guy and you're thinking, you know what, I really, really want one of these, I think you should pick one up. Um, they're, they're very, very neat and they're, it's, it's just insane. But that's good. I like seeing crazy, I like seeing different, and this is a little crazy and a little different. So there you go. Well done there, ADV. I'll probably be talking to you about an MP coming up here soon. That's the name of the spear point version. And uh, at the very least, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day, and I uh, hope I didn't butcher this review too badly. Bye now.